Hey everyone, and welcome to the first of our GAA PDSD Future Leaders podcast webinars. My name is Sally Fox, and this is the first in the series of five podcasts that we will be broadcasting between now and the end of the school year. So this year has been extremely challenging for both students and teachers. And we just wanna thank teachers for the fantastic work that they've done in the school and outside of school. Um, so yeah, and the GAA would also like to thank the PDSD for their fantastic support on the Future Leaders Programme, without which none of this would have even been possible. Um, so this is a student-led podcast, and over the next five weeks, we'll look at various topics which will be of interest to both students and teachers around the country. And it will probably provide plenty of talking points for you all. In podcast one today, we'll be looking at student leadership. In podcast two, we'll be looking at nutrition and strength and conditioning, all from a teenager's perspective. In podcast three, we'll be looking at the whole area of sports journalism. In podcast four, we'll be looking at um, women in sport. In podcast five, we'll discuss discrimination, integration and racism in sport. And um, you can find more information on all the podcasts and the guests we'll be having each week on our social media pages at GAA Future Leaders. So as I said, today we're looking for examples of student leadership. And I'm joined here by three TY Future Leader students from around the country whose Future Leaders classes have done absolutely super work throughout the year, both in school and during homeschooling. The events that they have organized for themselves and their communities are absolutely amazing. And they're just a fantastic example of student leadership. Um, and I think we could probably all learn a bit from them. <laughs> so I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Mary Hanrahan from Kalashtamura Ennis, Adam Murray from St. Declan's Kilnack Thomas, County Waterford, and Kleena Darcy from Gort Community School, County Galway. Welcome guys. Hi. Uh, thanks. Um, so firstly, I'd just like to find a bit about um, how the Future Leaders Programme is run in your school. So Mary, can you tell us a bit about how the programme is run in Colossumura? Like what modules are you doing and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, so um, the Future Leaders Programme is run by Mr. Collison in Colossumura, um, but different teachers would take on of different modules throughout the week. Um, we have Future Leaders during an 80 minute period on a Tuesday, but as I was saying, like we could have history during history. So we would have um, different modules during different classes as well as that. Um, and as well as that, then we'd hold our meetings, our committee meetings, maybe outside of school. Like we could have a committee meeting at nine in the morning during school, or we could have have it in the evening at around seven. Um, we are doing all eight of the modules. So we have completed the event management and sports administration module, the wellbeing module, sports journalism and nutrition. And we're in the process of doing the history, performance analysis, the coaching and the refereeing. Um, before we took our break for the Easter, we did the first re re first whistle refereeing course for the Camogie Association. So it's nice to get that done. And we're doing the um, football one after Easter as well. So that's a nice thing to do. Oh, geez. Yeah, that, you're, doing a, you're very busy. You're doing all of them. Uh, yeah. And... Was there any process in getting in? Did everyone just get into the Future Leaders program or did you? Um, we did have to fill out an application because there is a big interest in our school. Oh. So we were just sent out an application and we just basically wrote about why we wanted to do it and why we thought we should get in. And then Mr. Cullerton um, chose the class based on that. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really good. Um, and Adam, how many modules are you doing then? Uh, we're doing four modules. We started off doing the just the overview module and then we moved on to the refereeing and nutrition before Christmas. And uh, when we get back, we hope to do the journalism and video analysis. Jeez, that's really good. And so far, what do you think your favourite module is or do you have one? Uh, I suppose I probably enjoyed the, the refereeing uh, module. It was kind of, it was interesting to look at the all the slides and stuff and it was going through kind of what a referee's day be like on match day and it was just a kind of a different perspective you wouldn't normally think of it and it's just kind of interesting to look at. Yeah that's really good and um, Kleena how's the program run in Gort? Uh, so we would have around three or four teachers teaching the various modules the TYs and there's about four future leaders classes a week and then they would rotate every seven to eight weeks so in the eight weeks, we complete around one to two modules, depending on the length of them, really. 
So my class so far have completed the introductory module, event management, coaching, well-being, sports journalism, and then we're currently doing the nutrition and the history modules. There's around 90 odd TYs doing the Future Leader program this year in Gorse. Um, like it is good, there's something there for everyone. Mm. If you're not interested in coaching, you get the opportunity to do event management as well and see what that's like. Yeah, that's really good. I feel like it's really inclusive. So there's something yeah. for everyone, you know. Um, so schools are encouraged to set up a future leaders committee to allow um, pupils to take control and like organize things for themselves. So Mary, you're elected chairperson um, of your committee. So can you tell us like about your role and responsibilities as chair? Yeah, so I suppose my role really is to make sure that everyone is working together to achieve the same goal. I kind of have to make sure that everything is running smoothly, like I wouldn't have one specific job, but I'd just be looking after everything and just making sure everything's going to plan. Um, I'd be constantly communicating with the group. I think that's one of my main responsibilities, like checking in with different groups. It's not just me talking to the committee, it's everyone. Um, also, I have to be talking to the committee, though, like I have to make sure that we're all working together. Um, I have to make sure that our meetings are run effectively. Um, but my job, I suppose, is made quite easy. We have an excellent committee um, in place in Kalasta. Um, we have Emma Quinn, she's our secretary. And, you know, she'd work on communication, sending emails, all of her secretarial work. Um, Sarah Kyo is our treasurer and she looks after the finance. And Sophie O'Brien is our PRO and she's in charge of the social media. That's really good. That's brilliant. And like, what do you think your favorite thing about being chairperson is? Um, well, I love the communication side of it. I love getting to talk to loads of different people, like going around to the class and I'd be moving between different groups and just hearing what everyone has to say and get it, getting everyone's opinions. I really enjoy that. Yeah, that, that's really nice. Really nice. And um, so, Kleena, we saw on Instagram and Twitter that your class organized an AGM for your whole year online. So can you tell us a bit about that? How did it go? Yeah, our AGM involved a lot of work behind the scenes that a lot of people wouldn't really have known about. So the first thing we had to decide was whether it was going to be an online or face-to-face -face event, but obviously because of COVID, like our only choice really was online. So at the time we had an interim committee in place, which was two class captains from every class, and they were kind of in charge of the planning and the running of the AGM. So a few students came in on Fridays when we weren't meant to be in school and started testing the best way to host an online call. So they went through Google Meet, Zoom and Teams, but they found the Teams was the best since we're Microsoft 365 school and it would be the easiest and the most familiar for the students and the teachers. So our goal really was to be able to have our TYs in their classrooms watching a call and projector and be able to vote and see the positions like announced live. So a month before the AGM, a few students went around to all the TY classes with the nominations sheet and they wanted to see who was interested in the various positions and who they think was best for them. But the day before everyone was going around canvassing, like asking everyone to nominate them. Like it was nice to see everyone wanting to be involved and see like how many people were interested in it. So all the results then from that were put into a spreadsheet and then the top nomination for each position we put into a forms link that we were going to send out on the day of the AGM. Um, so then on the day of the AGM, we, were, we went live from the careers room and there were three presenters and they went through a PowerPoint with all the upcoming events while we had everyone together at once. So like, again, there was so many people behind the scenes. We had our social media crew going around, uh, updating social media, uh, filmmakers taking videos, a few TYs making sure that everything was going well in the classrooms. And we even had a sort of security team making sure it was quiet outside. We had our live voting and then announced the committee live, like showed great teamwork. So like, this event, even committees would struggle to organize. So I think it's great that a group of TYs working together could organize this and it'd be so cool. Yeah, it just, it, it sounds brilliant. It sounds like it was just organized so well yeah. and everything just ran smoothly. And um, so it's a great example for like other schools as well who want to do something like it. Um, so yeah, we often hear about students who love organizing events as part of the Future Leaders program. Um, and it is great to have responsibility, you know, to be trusted and to basically be the boss, you know, <laughs> everyone likes to be the boss. Um, so yeah, as we all know, it has been difficult this year to organize events with COVID, but Mary, your class organized a rounders tournament. So do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so basically we, we knew we wanted to run an event, but we weren't sure what we wanted to run. 
Um, so we kind of just broke into groups and there were so many different ideas. Like, for example, we had ideas for our well-being week. There was loads of different things. Um, but in the end, I suppose we chose Rocket Round is because we thought it was something that everyone could participate in, like whether they had a GAA background or a sporting background or not. And another good thing about it is it was mainly outside. So we thought it would be a good thing for COVID. Um, I suppose we wanted to run an event that was safe and enjoyable at the same time. And rounders was something that um, matched that. Um, every student volunteered for a certain role. Um, we had event managers and they organized the teams, the COVID officers ensured that the guidelines were followed. And I suppose they had a very important job. Um, the food man managers distributed the food and snacks safely. And the referees refereed the game, the financial managers collected the money, the promoters and the photographers posted on our social media and the equipment officers distributed and sourced the equipment. Um, we promoted the event on our social media and throughout the day as well, we had photographers and they were taking pictures. So they were up constantly uploading on the social media. So it was nice even for the people that weren't participating to see what was going on. And I think even like the future leaders themselves, the Instagram saw that we were running the event. So it was nice that way. Um, we did face a few challenges, all right. But I think that's all part of whatever event you run, you're going to face challenges. Yeah. Um, the first challenge was because we ran it in November, the weather was very unpredictable. So we did have to cancel the event twice before it actually went ahead. And as well on the day, it started raining when we were just playing the final. So we kind of had to make a decision and we were getting opinions from different people. And they said, we decided that we'd ask down the PE hall if it was free because there was actually a nice bit of space down there. And luckily the PE teacher, like the hall was free. So um, we were able to use that. Um, obviously because of COVID, it wasn't like, it was made a bit more difficult than it would have been without COVID, but there's definitely ways to work around it. So what we did was we made sure that everyone sanitized when entering and leaving either the pitch or the hall. And we required everyone to wear masks, whether you were playing or, or just spectating, because um, we thought that that would be a good way to stay safe. And we did try and make sure that everyone was spaced out nicely just for safety reasons. Yeah, it seems like it was organized brilliantly and like you seem to have a backup plan for anything that went wrong. You know, that's actually really, really good. And um, Kleena and Gort, you organised a wall ball tournament. So what was involved in setting that up? Yeah. I'd say it was a lot as well. Yeah, so we wanted to come up with a way in which we could get the first year boys and girls out practising because they couldn't get out on the pitch. So a group of TYs got together and organised a wall ball tournament for the first year boys and girls. So there were four students heavily involved and then like two boys and two girls. But then there were so many TYs involved in other ways as well. Like, so the TYs found out who was interested to take part and they had to do out fixtures for the first years and then also do out a rota for the TYs so that there were two TYs supervising uh, the games every lunchtime. And then another group had to come up with rules for the tournament and then realised that the wall ball was dirty looking and the targets weren't clear. So we got out on a Friday and painted the wall ball but like it looks way better now and there's definitely way more people using it. Um, but anyways, they got on with the wall ball tournament and had to keep updating our fixtures on our future leaders notice board and the social media crew kept putting updates up on the Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So yeah, like I think the first year probably really enjoyed it. Like it was a little competition between them probably made them feel more part of the school. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that that's brilliant. Like the amount of work again I can't get over there's so much work going into things that people wouldn't think like no one would think that you'd have to paint the wall but sure yeah. you did and that's just amazing and you said you also did uh, you also did primary school challenges did you you said that offline yeah so normally each year we'd invite primary school boys and girls from like South Galway and North Clare into the school for a fun blitz but obviously this year due to Covid we couldn't so but we still wanted the first years to get to know us in the school a bit better so we organized a series of online challenges for the primary school students. Um, we wanted them to get out um, and take part in these challenges. So they had to take a video of them completing them. So there were a healthy meal challenge, wall ball challenge, a freestyle hurling camogie challenge and a crossbar challenge. Um, 
we want them to send us the video completing them and using our hashtag so like it was a good experience because I actually like I never knew how long a project like this would take like the editors had to cut down days worth of footage to a little three minute video and make it interesting at the same time yeah yeah I'd say you learned so much about like making videos and everything yeah. and like produ the production side of things yeah so that's just unreal really really good and Adam talking about producing videos online together with your future leaders class in St. Declan's you've done amazing work producing over 25 podcasts so can you tell us how it all started? Yeah, I suppose uh, at the start of the year, we were kind of just looking for something, something kind of to a project to take on with the class. And someone mentioned uh, a podcast and we were all kind of showed an interest in it. So uh, I suppose the first few uh, videos we did were reviewing once their championship games that were coming up at the time. So it was, it was, hand it was, it was handy that the championship got pushed back for us because we had something to talk about and then um, I suppose we started getting guests on after a couple of weeks some of the the local players and the Waterford players talking about the games and we just kind of we were able to keep going for a couple of months getting a guest on maybe every week or two and uh, yeah just kind of started from there I suppose. That's that's really really interesting and so what's the process then in deciding a topic or a guest? Uh, well, I suppose we kind of, we tried to keep it fairly uh, topical. So if Offord were playing at the weekend, we we might try and get a, a past player on or maybe one of the current players if we're able to. And um, maybe on a Monday or Tuesday after the matches, we might do a review of the matches uh, by ourselves. So it was really just kind of keeping up to what was going on uh, at that moment, kind of. With, with the GA because there's a lot of games going on so there's plenty for us to talk about so yeah it was just trying to I suppose get what people would be interested in at the time and uh, yeah yeah that's brilliant and so I'd say there's people who don't want to be on camera so do they have things to do in the project like do they research or is there stuff for them to do yeah like they everyone will be kind of involved in it even though they're probably only about seven or eight of us that actually wanted to you know present a podcast or a talk on it like everyone if you weren't on it they'd be in class like we'd be coming up with ideas or people would be suggesting guests and then there might be a bit of research work to do like paired off just trying to prepare ourselves so everyone would be involved in some way shape or form oh yeah and is this all done over zoom then or is it teams or um yeah well when we were when we were in school we we're obviously able to organize it ourselves kind of in the classroom or maybe mm -hmm. meet up at lunchtime but uh we we were recording them on zoom um i suppose we couldn't be meeting up with the guests or anything like that and the we'd all gotten used to kind of using zoom and teams and all that so it was easy enough to record it and uh yeah so it kind of worked out well in that way that uh we could just record it online rather than having to you know meet up with someone and record it yeah and so you've done a lot of podcasts with um, people, with guests, and then some are um, panel discussions. So what's the difference between the two? I suppose the panel discussions, it would kind of just be, you'd be kind of thinking before it, what points you want to bring up. And like we'd probably talk in class, maybe what games you want to look at or what teams you want to talk about. And um, you'd kind of talk with whoever you're, whoever's doing it with you, you know, you'd kind of know what you're going to say before you start it. Um, and I suppose with the guests, it's kind of a bit different. You'd be researching bits about them and bits about their their career or whatever they were doing in the GA. And like we'd be, could spend the week kind of thinking up questions for them or thinking about stuff to ask them. So it's a bit different like that. But no, they're definitely both uh, enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. And do you have social media? Like how do you promote them? Yeah, we set up a, a social media for the for the class on Instagram and Twitter, uh, St. Declan's Future Leaders and the the actual school, Facebook and Instagram and all would be kind of promoting the podcast as well. And people might share it like a uh, Warford GA or someone who was on it, they might share it. So that's probably how it got around to a lot of people. Oh, yeah, that's it just. It's mad. It's such a big thing that you just organize and it's really good. Um, and so there must be huge excitement in the school and the community about the podcast. So 
is there can you tell us like um, a bit about that then I don't know there was a good there was a good buzz around when we were doing them like I suppose we were interviewing kind of a lot of uh, local players as well as bigger names so like you'd kind of know you kind of know the people you're interviewing so there'd be kind of a community aspect to that I suppose and a lot of the people we interviewed were past pupils of school so they were they found it nice I suppose to kind of come back and talk to I suppose people they wouldn't see in a few years and like I suppose people would have been saying to you um like well done the podcast and all that and there was just kind of a there was a good buzz around it already oh yeah I'd say there was that's that's brilliant like and um this might be a bit random but do you ever would you ever think about working in radio or tv you know in the future <laughs> or is it just the podcast that you like doing uh I hadn't really thought about it really uh, until this I suppose doing the podcast you wouldn't really you wouldn't really think you'd ever do something like it I suppose but once you get going at it it's fairly enjoyable like we'd all have a big enough interest in GA so you wouldn't really it wouldn't really feel like it wouldn't really feel like work when you're doing it because it's enjoyable and you know you're talking about the matches that you're interested in so it is enjoyable work like but uh it's there's a fair bit of work goes into it so it, it would be something interesting to do but hadn't really thought about it much to be honest yeah and so you really have had some high profile guests on the podcast so who do you think was your favorite guest and why um i suppose i probably enjoyed doing the the local guests from Waterford more like uh we kind of know them a bit and we kind of know a bit more about them you'd be able to be a bit more personal than doing say some of the guests we got from around the country so when we did the interviews with you know Caden Lyons and Connor Murray, Billy Power, all them, like they were enjoyable because you'd, you'd know the lads like, and you'd be able to just have a chat with them. I suppose be a bit, be a bit less formal. Like mm-hmm. the ones, the ones with Brendan Cummins, Declan Brown, John Milan, like they're they were all great to talk to, like legends of the game really. But I suppose the local ones are probably the the ones I enjoyed the most. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. And um, I actually watched a few of them and I was really, really impressed. I really was. I really enjoyed them because I don't know. I just I was kind of pleasantly surprised about the whole thing. And so where then do you find all the podcasts if you want to tune in? Uh, yeah, so they're up on uh, the the YouTube page, the class set up. So it's St. Declan's uh, GA Future Leaders Extra Time podcast. So they're all they can all be found up there. Oh, that's fabulous. Really, really interesting. So as most of you know, during school closures last year and this year, we ran an online initiative called GAA Solo. So these were a series of challenges each week designed to keep people active and healthy at home. Um, The response was absolutely amazing and we received thousands of video entries from students and teachers around the whole country. Um, So, and there were also individual prizes from O'Neill's for students and teachers and a prize each week for the most active school. So Mary, that's where you come in then. Um, you took your, you and your school took the whole country by storm during post Christmas lockdown, with over eight hundred and fifty videos entered into the competition. So, how on earth did you and your future leaders class make that happen? I suppose when we heard that the competition was running again, we broke into groups, and we just wanted people to give us ideas. I mean, of what we could do, how we could get as many people involved as possible because we saw it as an opportunity to promote physical and mental well-being in our school we thought it would be a really nice thing to get as many people involved as possible um when we broke up we got so many different ideas like there was loads of different things and i think that's another important thing um is to hear from everyone not just the committee not just your teacher to hear from everyone the whole class you never know what someone could come up with that would really benefit um the competition or the school Um, I think then when we understood the concept of the competition, you know, our teacher kind of explained it to us. We did some research. um, We looked on the um, Future Leaders Instagram to learn a bit more about it. It was a lot easier for us to think of ways to promote it. Um, Some of the things that we came up with were we created digital posters. So we had a different one each week and we tried to use as much colour and um, we made the information quite concise. So it was easy for the students to understand we emailed the students um, to inform them about the competition. We offered crew necks and homework passes 
to the best student entries and we also had a teachers competition as well um, so that was nice for the teachers to get involved as well um, we also went around the classes on zoom um, to just explain to them again um, why it would benefit them and what it was all about and yeah I suppose the more people that got involved they got their friends involved and then when the teachers got involved, they got more teachers involved and different people were nominating others. And it was really nice. It does go to show that when you do put your minds to something and work together, it can have an absolutely hugely positive impact um, on the school and the, even the community. Yeah. Um, so then once you won the most active school prize in week one, a lot of schools probably would have found it difficult to keep momentum going for the following weeks. But not ye. <laughs> your entries seem to increase like every single week. And the response that you got from students and teachers was absolutely phenomenal. So how did you and your class kind of encourage that and keep it going? Yeah, as you say, we, we got an amazing response. Like the amount of like community, the sense of community really developed in our school. Like everyone was talking about it. So that was great. Um, we had said that we wanted to try and win the first week because we you know, kind of a competition element to it and a bit of crap during lockdown is something to keep us going. Um, so we kind of just said that we'd start posting our own videos and we get as many people going as possible. And then I suppose when we won week one, we wanted to win week two and we were on a roll and we gathered some momentum. We wanted to just keep it going. Um, as the competition progressed as well, we just became more competitive and we became more passionate as well about the competition. Like we wanted to be successful and we wanted to get people out and active um, for our school. Um, Colossia is a competitive school and we had the high standards and the teachers were getting involved, you know, the, the classes were getting involved and then different classes would look on the social media and they'd see, oh, there's my teacher taking part, I'll take part. And so we kind of just got more and more entries um, like that. And I think in the end, like our class really bonded over it. We definitely became more closer because of it, because we were constantly talking. You know, we might have a call at um, during the day, during school hours, and we could have it at seven o'clock in the evening. So we definitely became um, closer and we had a lot of, lot of fun doing it as well. Yeah, you seem to have such good crack doing it, which is really good because it's such a, a positive thing, you know, so you were getting the benefits that it was fun and also you were keeping active and healthy while at home. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and then um, Kleena, so we've seen from your posts that you've shared with us on social media that you and Guard CS Future Leaders Committee have been very busy since lockdown started. So do you want to just share a bit about what you've been planning? Um, so when the school closed, we tried to keep up with our regular meetings. So we met around one or once, twice a week on like a Tuesday and a Thursday or Monday and Thursday. Um, and we tried to organise some online events um, if we didn't return to school and some face to face events if we do. So, for example, we're currently holding a trick shot competition on our socials. And in the future, we plan on organising a baking slash cook off, a quiz and a 2021 kilometre challenge for hopefully the whole year um, and maybe other years. For each of our competitions, then we plan on giving some prizes to keep everyone interested and maybe some gear from our online O'Neill shop. Um, we want the events to be as inclusive as possible. So if you're not into sports, there's a bacon competition. So it's as inclusive. Um, uh, before school closed, then a group of transitioners were working on an internet TV show slash podcast. Um, and there were seven overseeing it, but then each person obviously had more TYs involved so in like camera crew, sound and lighting, presenters, script writers, research crew, PR communications and set designers. It should be good and they plan on having some interesting guests. So kind of look forward to that. Yeah, that's the, that's just it's really good. Like it's just so cool all the things that you're planning even during lockdown and everything and that's another thing I love about future leaders it's so inclusive there is something for everyone mm -hmm. and I feel like you're really kind of um taking that on board you know yeah. um but yeah so student leadership is really really important and it's really great to see students take charge of their schools and their projects so Adam what do you think you've learned from this experience um I suppose it's just kind of a uh... It just kind of give you a bit of confidence i suppose when you're if you're doing a bit of public speaking or if you were talking to someone like you wouldn't know you'd, be, you'd just get used to talking to people you wouldn't know and asking them different questions and talking to them about different topics 
So I suppose it's just at the start, you wouldn't be, you'd be fairly unsure about what you're doing. But uh, as we got into it, as we got into the podcast, I suppose we were, we got more comfortable with it and started enjoying it more as well. So uh, it was good for that kind of just, it kind of bring you out yourself just to, to talk to different people, I suppose. So that's what probably we learned, yeah. Yeah, and I'd say you just learned so many new things like during the podcast. And Mary, then how do you think Future Leaders has benefited you? Um, I think we've definitely learned a lot of teamwork and communication skills. We've learned to take everyone's opinion into consideration that everyone has an idea and to just, you know, think of them all and then you'll come up with loads of different things. Um, I think I, we've also like developed an appreciation for those in leadership positions because a lot of hard work does go into these things. Like even when we were running our event, we had no idea the amount of preparation that goes into just even small little events like blitzes, things like that. So I think we've definitely um, developed an appreciation for those who are in charge and those who put so much time into running those events. Oh, you know, um, and Kleena, um, do you think that doing the Future Leaders program has changed your perspective on school at all? Yeah, I think so. Like as Mary and Adam said, like it gives you definitely get a sense of responsibility from it. And teachers give you so much stuff to do and expect you to be able to do it. And confidence as well. It's helped me hugely with confidence. You're speaking to so many people, uh, mixing with people, sharing how you feel about topics. And like it is very good in that way. I am really delighted that you could join me for the first ever Future Leaders podcast. Um, it was really great seeing amazing examples of student leadership. And it was really interesting chatting to you all and getting an insight into just the fantastic work that you and your schools have done keeping up with the program. And it's just a really positive way to kind of think about things at the moment because we're in very challenging times. So tune in again next week when I'll be discussing all things nutrition and strength and conditioning related with experienced coaches John Murphy of FHS Performance and Dermot Carr, who is the assistant SNC coach with the Tipperary Senior Hurlers. We'll be getting some absolutely great tips and advice on how to get through lockdown in a fit and healthy way. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And thanks so much, guys, for joining me. And um, I hope to see you again next week. So stay safe and stay healthy and have fun. <laughs> Bye.